Yo guys, how's it going? Welcome back to another emulator tutorial. And today we're going to be taking a look at Citra. This is a 3DS emulator and I really like it. It's pretty good and it lets me play some of my favorite 3DS games. So let's do this. Alrighty, so the first thing you're going to want to do is come to the first link in the description and we can press on the download button and we will download for my platform, which is Windows. Once this setup finishes downloading, we can just install it. So welcome to the Citra Setup Wizard. Let's go next. And we'll install it where we want. So you can install it on the default location, except I'm going to install it into a special folder that I made called Citra. But you can install it wherever you want. We'll go into next. And now these two versions of Citra Citra Canary is in development and it will be, you know, unstable. And Citra Nightly is, yeah, as it says, official tested versions that are known to work. So we're going to keep on Nightly. That is the most stable one. And we'll go to next. Accept the license. Just make sure you read it. And go next. And for our start menu shortcuts, you can type in the name of our folder that we want to make. So I'm going to do Citra and we will install it. Alright, now that it's done, we can just press finish to exit the wizard and we can close out of our browser. Now what we're going to want to do is go into our start menu and go over to our Citra folder and we will see Citra nightly. So we can open that right on up and we will see this interface and if you watch my Yuzu tutorial, you will find this is fa fairly similar. It is made by the same people so mo most of it is relatively similar. So we have here telemetry. Our anonymous data is collected to help improve Citra. I am going to share my data for this, but again, up to you. Now what we're going to do is just like we did in Yuzu, we're going to configure some stuff so we can come to emulation configure and we'll get up this window. First thing I want to do is get rid of this horrendous light mode. So we can go over to UI theme and I'm going to go dark colorful. And once we hit OK, that'll all be fixed and now we can actually start configuring things. All right, first off, in general, confirm exit when emulation is running. That means that when you close, if you try to close the program while you're running a game, it'll give you a confirmation message. Pause emulation when in background means that if you click off of the program, then it will pause the emulation. Hide mouse on inactivity means that if you put your mouse over the window and leave it still for a while, it'll hide. Updates, we can check for updates when the program starts and we can make it auto update after closing so I like doing this and not this. As for emulation under region we can select whichever region we're in you can do auto select but this region I'm pretty sure has to match your game so I'm gonna set my region to USA because that is the region that I am in and all my games are for USA. As for emulation speed uh, same as in Citra, this is the speed that your games will run. You want to leave it at 100% because if you make it faster, then the games will run faster and slower, and the games will run slower. Now we're going to go over to web, and we can provide an ID, a token, if we are to log into our account, but I don't have an account. And we can turn on and off sharing our anonymous usage data. We can also turn on and off showing our current game in Discord. Under debug, we can leave pretty much everything the same. And now let's move on to system because we will come back to UI later. Now under system, we can enable and disable new 3DS mode. And what that means is if you turn this on, then it will emulate a new 3DS. And if you turn it off, it'll emulate an old 3DS. I'm going to leave this on because if you're going to emulate uh, old 3DS, then some new 3DS games won't work. One example is Minecraft, although I don't know why you would play Minecraft on an emulator when you could just play it on your computer. <laughs> Anyways, for our username, you just want to set this to whatever username you want and set your birthday to your birthday. As for the language, I'm going to keep mine on English and our output mode, stereo, because I have stereo headphones, but mono is one speaker, stereo is two speakers, and surround sound is five or seven speakers. As for country, uh, I am in Canada, so I'm going to set that to Canada. Clock, that will specify how the t clock works on the 3DS, so... If it's set to system clock, then it will sync with your computer. And if it's set to fixed time, then you can set it to whatever time you want whenever you turn it on, and it'll advance. 
as you keep it on. But every time you start it up, it'll always be on the same time. That's useful for time traveling in things like Animal Crossing New Leaf. As for play coins, we can set how many play coins you have. Now, if you don't know what the play coins are, they are little coins that you can get. Every 100 steps that you do with your 3DS, uh, it will give you play coins. And these can be used to buy things in games. So obviously you can't take steps with your computer. So you can set however many you want here. I'm going to leave it on 42. But if you want to be very not cheaty, you can just set it to zero. I'm going to leave it on 42 here. We can leave our console ID just how it is. For overclocking, we can just leave that also how it is. And let's move on to camera. Now, as for, for our camera to configure, we can pretty much just leave this all on blank. This can basically just configure how the camera works. So if we were to select, we can make it a still image. So then, for example, we can actually load an image to preview as our front camera so that if it ever tries to use our camera, it will see that image as the camera. Or we can set it to our system camera. Uh, I don't know really how to use this. Uh, none of them seem to work if I preview them. You can see that no matter what device I select. Oh, hey, there I am. You can just select whichever device is your camera. So this device is my camera. Uh, I can use it as my front camera or my rear camera, but I'm just going to turn this back to blank for now. And that'll basically just make the camera blank. Now for graphics, we can set our internal resolution to whatever resolution we want. Now this is a really important one. Uh, native, this is the native size of the 3DS, but if you want to upscale it to make it look a bit better, we can set that to whatever we want here. So I'm going to upscale it to five or four times native. Sure, that, that'll work. Um, but obviously that will use more processing power. Although this, it, you can increase your resolution, so you can make it look a lot better. You're going to leave Enable Linear Filtering on, and for post-processing shader, once again, leave that on. Texture Filter. You can filter the textures, and apparently that makes it look better. I'll leave a comparison on the screen, so it probably looks different, but I'm going to leave mine on None to mimic the look of the 3DS. Now for screen layout, we'll once again get to that later. Uh, this is just kind of how the screens will be positioned on your screen, because there's two screens on the 3DS, and you only have one screen. And yeah, we'll leave this le whole layout thing as it is right now, we can change that later. Now for utility, uh, we can leave this all on blank, but if you if you want to edit the textures, you can turn on dump textures, and then as you play the game, textures will be dumped to a specified folder. And then if you use custom textures, then basically you can open the custom texture directory, replace the textures that you've dumped, and then put them in the custom texture directory and it'll basically replace it. So I made this, if you look on screen, by just hand drawing all the textures. Uh, we're going to keep those off because I just want to use the default textures. Now for advanced, once again, we can just leave this all how it is and we'll move on to audio. Now for the audio emulation, uh, if you're getting any weird audio glitches, you might want to set this to LLE or LLE multicore um, because HLE is fast and it will make your games run much faster, but it can have a lot of bugs. Uh, for output engine, uh, you can leave this on auto. It'll auto select whichever one it is. If you set it to null, there will be no audio. For audio stretching, once again, you want to leave that on so that if your game is running slower, then your audio won't end up being weird. <laughs> As for our audio device, if you set it to auto, it'll just mimic the one that you have set on your computer. So that's what I like to leave it as, but you can also select whatever audio device you want. I'm going to keep it on auto here. And for our volume, we can just change the volume of the emulation. Now for our microphone as well, this is to mimic the microphone on the 3DS. So I'm going to set this to real device and I'm going to make it my blue snowball. A static noise will just, you know, make it always be like, right? Uh, except I'm just going to put it on my real device so it actually is using my microphone. And you can just select your microphone down here. And now for our controls. Uh, this is obviously going to be how you control the game. You can make different profiles for different games. So let's say we have one for like Animal Crossing New Leaf. And then you might want different controls for like Mario Bros. 2, right? So you can configure them here. So let's do our Animal Crossing New Leaf profile for now. It won't change automatically in games. That's a feature that would be really cool from Simu. Uh, so you will have to come into here every time, but that's not too big of a deal for me. Now, what you're going to want to do first is just clear them all so that you won't get any conflicts or anything. Uh, but the circle pad is how you move your character around. So we can do like left, right, up, down for WASD. A C stick doesn't really do anything in this game, so we can just leave it unbound. Start and select. I'll just bind to my 4 and 3 
CLR, CLZR. Once again, bind these however you want. Now for hotkeys, uh, this is this is once again just some hotkeys to do things that you would do in the settings menu quicker. So all of these things you can change however you want them. They're fairly self-explanatory, so you know, exit, exit full screen, whatever. But that's pretty much everything done here, so let's just press OK. And now we're going to need to add our games. Now I have a guide in the second link in the description where you can add your games. Uh, so you have to dump them from your 3DS. Uh, unlike Yuzu, you don't need a prod.keys. So we, you can just dump your games, get them into a folder, and then you can just double click on this huge folder icon and browse for your folder. So I have it under D, emulator games, 3DS, games, et voila. Now this is all of our games that I have. And yeah, you can just double click to open them. But once again, we're not really done yet. First, some beautifying to do. If we go to Emulation Configure and under UI, this is how we can control how the games list looks. So let me show you around real quick. So you have the title right up here, and then underneath it you have uh, the file name. Over here under Compatibility, that just shows how well the game will run. And then beside that it shows the region. And then also the file type and the size. So let's say we can also change like the size of the icons, but I don't like the file name underneath the title so I'm just gonna set that to none and there we go we can see if we press OK that updates you can also here set different things so we can make it like the path or you know whatever we can set it to be um, we can set it to show whatever we want so I'm just gonna set that to back to none there we go now we're pretty much done and we can boot up our games but there's one thing for games that use me's if we were to pop into me maker right now Oh, uh, we'll also have to configure our screen layout, but we'll do that in a second. If we pop into Me Maker and we go through, let's start from scratch, you'll see an issue very quickly. Uh, this is how all Mii's look. They all have uh, X circle arrow faces. Basically, this is not how they're supposed to look. Uh, yeah, their necks are also very, very skinny. Uh, so obviously, we'll want to change that. So the way that we can fix that is I have a third link in the description, and that's a download link for a thing called NAND and what we can do here is press Windows key and R to open up run do percent app data percent and it will open up this roaming folder we can go into our Ctrl folder and we'll see this folder called NAND and what we're going to need to do is get the NAND folder uh, from the link in the description and you know just copy it in here and just replace the files in the destination now if we were to go out of this and go into MeMaker once again by the way, you can go full screen to go full screen. Now here we go, welcome to Me Maker, and you will see that if we start from scratch again, we actually have a working me. So, you know, their faces actually work and stuff, and they don't have skinny necks. So yeah, that's just how you can fix the me problem. You also might want to create a me for stuff like Mario Maker and Tamodachi Life, if you're going to be playing those kind of games. Anyways, there's one last thing that we probably want to configure, and that is the screen layout. Because I don't really want my screens to be laid out in this way. You might, but I don't because, you know, there's a lot of black space that's being unused. So what we can do is come up to here and go view screen layout. There's a bunch of different layouts. So we can do a single screen where we only see the top screen, although that's pretty bad for some games. Some it does work, but I don't like that very much. What I use is large screen. So you can see you have the big top screen and then the tiny bottom screen. Uh, I like this a lot. And then we also have side by side. So they're the same size, side by side. Once again, don't really like it. So I'm gonna go to large screen. You can also do swap screens, and you'll see that you can swap them around. So if there's a game that heavily uses the bottom screen, you can swap it like this. Another thing that we can do is rotate them, and I am not sure why you would want this at all, but uh, it's an option. But anyways guys, thank you so much for watching this video. I really hope you enjoyed, I hope I helped you out, I hope my awful Mario Kart footage doesn't make you cringe too much. I do have my control setup for Animal Crossing New Leaf right now. But that's fine. I hope you guys really enjoyed this video. I hope it helped you out. Remember to leave a like, comment, and possibly subscribe. We recently just hit 1,000 subscribers, which is absolutely insane. So thank you guys so much. And yeah, I'll see you guys later. Goodbye.